Descript has a feature that can turn your bad audio into good audio. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. You may record some video, maybe some podcasts, maybe just some audio for notes later. And maybe you want to hear them in really good, rich audio. And sometimes the audio recording that you have just isn't that good. Sometimes it's from your childhood or with the inferior technology, whatever it might be. Descript is one of the most innovative video editing apps I've ever used. And it has a feature called Studio Sound that can up-level your audio. Let me show you how it works, maybe on one of the most famous television commercials of all time. All right, so here I am in the Descript app here. You can upload an audio file, like an MP3. You can upload a video file, like an MP4 or AVI or something like that. And basically, it will give you this transcription. Now, one of the things that you have to do in order to turn on the Studio Sound here is either highlight everything. So if I do a Control A, will highlight everything or what I've noticed if you haven't edited it and the file is still one piece, you can go down here to the timeline and click on the waveform or the file. As long as it has everything highlighted, now you can go over here to audio effects and toggle on studio sound. Now I want to tell you that when they first released this, they said that studio sound applies to everything. Now, in my experience, what happens here is studio sound applies to everything in the project file as it sits right now. So if I go ahead and toggle this on, it's going to apply studio sound to everything. Now, in my experience, and I'm not sure if this is totally accurate, that if I go ahead and do some editing now and bring in a second file, so if I go ahead and add an outro file, like a outro video, a 30 second outro clip, or a 10 second splash screen or something like that at the beginning, or I bring in a clip midway, if you're doing some editing of a video file for yourself, it does not automatically apply studio sound to it. So that's my experience. I'm not sure if that's totally correct, uh, but when I have added another file, it doesn't seem to apply studio sound to it, which is actually what I want because I want to apply studio sound usually to only certain stuff. Otherwise you'd have to export it and then start with a new file. Now, once it applies studio sound, and I will say that it seems to do this on the server side, so if you're working with a file, it uploads it to the Descript servers, and then you can apply it. So if you are uploading a long audio or video file and you hit Studio Sound, you may see it processing. So it won't do anything until it uploads the entire file. The other thing I want to show you here is if you click on the effect settings, you can change the intensity of this. I have noticed a little bit that sometimes on audio that's really bad, you know, some original audio for videos you may have shot a while ago, or maybe you recorded a podcast on your phone or something like that, that sometimes if the intensity is full, it sounds like it's slurring or there's a lisp. So somehow it's trying to scrub out that background noise and it loses a little something in the audio file itself. Sometimes if you pull this down a little bit, you can kind of find a good balance. And in this case, because there's some static in the background, it's going to start removing that, but it might remove some of the actual spoken words too. So just kind of remember, you might not want it on full intensity, but for this demonstration, and because I think it works best on full intensity on this file here, that I am going to now show you the original video with the original audio, and then I will show you the same one with the audio in studio sound. Now, let me say this. I actually think the original audio with all its crackle and pops is actually a bit more romantic. It kind of pulls you back in time to an era when you were recording on reel to reel tapes or something like that. And so there's something a little nostalgic for me to hear Paul Harvey's voice with all those audio imperfections. But this is just more of a demonstration of an audio file that is truly a low quality recording. And just a demonstration of what you can do is if you have a half decent recording now, a family movie or a recording that you did on a podcast, or maybe the audio wasn't perfect, so you didn't notice it in time. So you do have the studio sound setting here in Descript, which can help up level that a little bit. So with that being said, let's listen to The Farmer's Speech by Paul Harvey. And on the eighth day. God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. 
God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. I need somebody with arms strong enough to wrestle a calf and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to call hogs, tame cantankerous machinery, come home hungry, have to wait lunch until his wife's done feeding visiting ladies, then tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon and mean it. So God made a farmer. God said I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die and dry his eyes and say maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of hay wire feed sacks and shoe scraps, who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon and then pain in from tractor back put in another 72 hours. So God made a farmer. God had to have somebody willing to ride the ruts at double speed to get the hay in ahead of the rain clouds and yet stop in midfield and race to help when he sees the first smoke from a neighbor's place. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadow lark. So God made a farmer. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners. Somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake, and disc, and plow, and plant, and tie the fleece, and strain the milk, and replenish the self-feeder, and finish a hard week's work with a five-mile drive to church. Somebody who'd bail a family together with the soft, strong bonds of sharing. Who would laugh, and then sigh, and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says, that he wants to spend his life doing what dad does. So God made a farmer. And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at the meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. I need somebody with arms strong enough to wrestle a calf and yet gentle enough to deliver his own grandchild. Somebody to call hogs, tame cantankerous machinery, come home hungry, have to wait lunch until his wife's done feeding visiting ladies, then tell the ladies to be sure and come back real soon, and mean it. So God made a farmer. God said I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn colt and watch it die and dry his eyes and say maybe next year. I need somebody who can shape an axe handle from a persimmon sprout, shoe a horse with a hunk of car tire, who can make harness out of hay wire feed sacks and shoe scraps, who planting time and harvest season will finish his 40-hour week by Tuesday noon and then pain in from tractor back put in another 72 hours, so God made a farmer. God had to have somebody willing to ride the ruts at double speed to get the hay in ahead of the rain clouds and yet stop in midfield and race to health when he sees the first smoke from a neighbor's place. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody strong enough to clear trees and heave bales, yet gentle enough to yean lambs and wean pigs and tend the pink combed pullets who will stop his mower for an hour to splint the broken leg of a meadow lark. So God made a farmer. It had to be somebody who'd plow deep and straight and not cut corners, somebody to seed, weed, feed, breed, and rake and disc and plow and plant and tie the fleece and strain the milk and replenish the self-feeder and its finish a hard week's work with a five-mile drive to church. Somebody who'd bail a family together with a soft, strong bonds of sharing, who would laugh and then sigh, and then reply with smiling eyes when his son says that he wants to spend his life doing what Dad does. So God made a farmer.